We got a small electrical project here. We got to replace some desk barred switches for my basement lighting. And uh, what we got, we can turn this on. I got these lights down here. I've been doing some work in my basement. But anyway, um, that's why the paneling's down. But uh, this middle switch failed on me today. And that's the one that goes over the pool table here. So uh, I decided to pull this apart and replace the switch. And you could still get desk barred switches, but uh, I wasn't too impressed with this wiring procedure. Um, this, this basement was finished. My house was built in 1964, and the, the basement part here was finished in 1970. By the uh, by the original owner he did it himself he didn't do that bad of a job but um, his electrical eh, wasn't that impressive um, whenever I see people use these quick um, these quick wire connects on switches I get a little concerned because that's just a poor way of doing things and in these particular switches you don't even have a choice of using screw connectors that's how cheap they are so but that switch there is from 1970 and uh, we're going to replace it with uh, new Slater desk barred switches which are these right here you can see uh, oh, here's, the, here's the bracket and the switch assembly it just goes inside and you just bend the little tab they really don't use these old style switches anymore I believe it was because of electrical code reasons, because um, in, in this small little switch box, you, you generally are overstuffing it with wires. So uh, you really don't see these anymore, but they are still produced. Uh, Pass and Seymour is the only one who makes them, and you can get these at like Ace Hardware or whatnot. And this is a nice switch. So uh, we're going to put three of them in, and as you can see, this gets hardwired. No, uh, no quick connects. So what the other, the bad practice here is the fact that the uh, wiring, as you can see, the hot wire and the switched end of the wire is all the same color, but it's not that difficult to figure out because this big wire nut here pretty much tells me that this is the main hot wire because it feeds this, each of the switches. So, uh, you know, we just got to put the new one in and we should be good to go. The reason they were called Despard switches is because that was the name of the inventor, Victor Despard, who worked for Pass and Seymour. And I believe the first patent for these switches was sometime in like the mid-1930s. And they were very common in, uh, in residential construction up until around the late 60s so and I got these things all over my house but that's pretty much it just a, a brief little history on the desk barred switch and again not too many people would expect the switch to fail but it finally did happen you can kind of feel that the way the spring action is isn't right as opposed to this But again, don't ever wire up your stuff with those quick disconnects. That's just bad because you don't get as good a connection and you're, you're pulling a lot of current through small contact area and it can get kind of hot. So, but that's pretty much it. Basic little electrical house wiring tip involving desk barred switches. And here's the new switch assembly. It's all hardwired in now. And as you can see, the insulation ends right at the terminal, which is just a common sense good practice to do. You don't want excessive uh, copper wire exposed because that increases potential for short circuits. Same thing on the bottom with all the hot wire feeds.
And just a real simple thing I did on these switches to make things a little easier. Originally two of the switches were running on the same circuit. And two switches still are running on the same circuit, but instead of running um, two individual hot wires back into the box to tie in to the, to the hot junction, I just looped one wire around the first switch and brought it to this switch. So that just allowed me to run one wire then, which is, which is perfectly fine. Uh, because both of those wires are just tying into a single wire in the first place. It's not like you're putting excessive current draw on one wire now. What it does, it allows you to take one wire out of the box. Because as you can see, it's pretty congested in there. And if you can eliminate one wire and neaten up the job, it just makes it that much better. And it's easier to work with. Because you got to compress all this back in the box. And it's also good to uh, kind of put nice bends in the wires, kind of pre-bend it, so so when you compress this back in the box you're not pinching and overstressing anything. Here's a quick look at the original switch that I pulled out. These kind of had a louder click noise. I actually kind of like that click sound with this hollow wood paneling it kind of acted like a resonation chamber that click was really loud and pronounced when you flip the switch whereas the newer ones they still click but uh, they're not as loud of course these are definitely a much higher quality switch and uh, again Pass and Seymour they are the only ones left still making Despard switches pretty much everyone got out of it um, you know, it just became an obsolete method of switch wiring. You know, GE used to make them, Leviton, Eagle, a lot of the big electric companies made these back in the day. But one other thing to point out when installing these, and I've seen this problem in, uh, in other jobs I've worked on, is people tend to, uh, usually amateurs, they don't put the switches properly on the bracket. And as you can see here, I'm just going to set this up here as like a little table. This bracket, you're supposed to put your screwdriver inside here and turn the bracket down into the slot on the switch. But instead what this guy did he actually stuck a screwdriver in and he bent these tabs up on the switch into the bracket, which is totally incorrect. And again, I've seen that done before. And if you're not totally familiar with Despard switches, it might not be really obvious that, you know, the right way of do how to do it. Because at a glance, the first thing you wonder is, well, how in the world does the switch get secured in there? But this is the right way to do it. As you can see, your screwdriver goes inside the slot here, and you turn it down. And it causes a cam wedging effect on the switch. And there's a slot in the top of the switch where the metal tab on the bracket goes into. So that bending of the metal just locks it in. And now you've got a nice tight switch in the bracket. Whereas opposed to doing it the incorrect way, you have a very loose wobbly switch because you're really not getting a nice positive mechanical lock. Yeah, quick look at these. You know, you just sit this in here, get it latched. It just holds in there. And again, you just you just turn that little tab up there and these lock right in. So at this point, all you do now is just after verifying that the circuits work, which they do. You just wrap electrical tape all the way around the perimeter a few times because as you can see we don't have much clearance inside the box. And you don't ever want this to be a potential short problem with the perimeter of the box. So, and it's really not likely that it'll touch. It's just a very good practice to do. It's a good safety thing. 
and here's the look at the switch with a few turns of electrical tape wrapped around it. So now it's nice and safe. And here they are, all finished and ready to go. So let's test them out. Light one. Light two. And light three. And there we have it. These Despart switches should last many years to come.